Hey what's up everybody, it's Jason from Code Monkeys and welcome to another Code Monkeys tutorial. In today's tutorial we are going to be discussing electronic speed controllers, ESCs. So we're going to start with a brief description of what ESCs are and why we need them, specifically in the context of RC drones. Then we are going to discuss some of the basic components and some of the basic terminology. So first time drone builders should find this video useful if they are feeling uncomfortable in trying to interpret the information provided by an ESC. And one more quick note is to remember that different companies may represent the ESC information differently, so be sure to always refer to the product descriptions and the user manuals before purchasing or operating an ESC. So why do we use them? And we first need to realize we are using brushless DC motors, BLDCs, in our RC drone, which are synchronous motors that are powered by DC electricity and via an inverter or switching power supply produce an AC electric current which is used to drive each phase of the motor. So basically our ESCs are what will create the three phase AC power needed to power our brushless DC motors. And to put it simply, they allow us to direct and convert the power from our DC battery to our brushless DC motors which once again require AC power as input. And they also allow us to control how fast the motor spin via signal from the receiver. And for right now, you can just think of the receiver as something that inputs a signal to the ESC. The ESC will then process that signal, and then the output of the ESC will then control how fast the motors will spin. And another thing to pay attention to is if the ESC has a battery eliminator circuit, a BEC. And if it does, it can also be used to power the receiver, the servos, and any other electronic components that need to get connected to it. And another question you may be asking yourself is, how many do you need? And the answer depends upon the type of drone you're building and is equal to the number of required motors. And this makes sense because you have one DC battery which needs to power all of the motors using a power distribution board. So each motor is going to need to have an ESC connected to it so the DC power can get converted to AC power which will then be used to operate the motors. So for a tricopter you would need three, for a quadcopter you would need four, for a hexacopter you would need six, and for an octocopter you would need eight. And this is obvious just by looking at the prefix of each type of copter. So some of the basic components and terminology. So if you look at the left hand side of the ESC you're going to see a black wire and that's the negative DC battery lead. And then you're going to see a red wire and that's the positive DC battery lead. And at the bottom you're going to see a connector. This specific connector is an XT60 connector. So the DC battery leads get connected to the DC battery via an XT60 connector in this case, but other ESCs may use different connectors. For example, you may see an XT90, a JST, a Dean's connector, etc. So just make sure your ESC connector matches your battery connector before you buy it, because if it doesn't, then you will need to buy an adapter or make your own adapter, which can be more time consuming and more expensive. So I would just make sure they match to keep it simple. Also, some batteries come with multiple connectors as well. And now we're going to look at the bottom line of the ESC. So you'll see that it says 2-4S. So that tells you how many DC battery cells it will support and how those cells are connected, i.e. in series or parallel. So the S stands for series connection and the P stands for a parallel connection. Most of the time, the DC batteries that are used to power these RC drones will have all of their cells connected in series. So you'll most likely only see the series connection, but if you do see a P, the P stands for parallel connection. And here the 2-4S means this ESC can support two, three, or four DC battery cells that are connected in series. And now we're going to look at the letters LIPO. So that tells you the type of DC battery that this ESC supports. And here the LIPO stands for lithium polymer. And it's very common for RC drones because they are very lightweight and power efficient batteries. And you may also see some other types of batteries, for example, nickel metal hydride, nickel cadmium. And another important note is that it may not be explicitly written on an ESC, but your ESC may also support other types of batteries which will be written in the product description and in the user manual. And right next to that you are going to see 16.8 volts max. So that's the maximum battery voltage this ESC can support. And in this case it can support 16.8 volts. 
So when you're buying the battery, just make sure that it doesn't produce a voltage that's greater than the maximum voltage that your ESC can handle. And now we're going to look at the current rating of the ESC. So this is how ESCs are categorized. So you may see 12 amp ESC, 20 amp ESCs, 40, etc. So the important thing to pay attention to here is the max current that your motors draw because for the ESC current rating, it should be at least five amps greater than the max current that the motors draw. Now if you look at the right hand side of the ESC, you're going to see three wires, which are the motor leads. So these are what get connected to the AC motor and they can get connected in any order. And if you want a motor, if you want the motor to spin clockwise instead of counterclockwise, then you can just simply switch any of the wires and vice versa. If you connect the motor leads to the motor and it's spinning counterclockwise and you want it to spin clockwise, once again, all you have to do is switch any of the wires. So now we're going to look at the BEC voltage and current. So you'll see that it says 5 volts slash 3 amps BEC. So first of all, this tells you that the ESC has a BEC. And here the BEC drops the voltage down to 5 volts and operates at a current of 3 amps. So now it can safely be used to power your drone's receivers, the servos, and the flight controller, and any other electronic components. So just make sure that before you buy the ESC, that you read the product description for the receiver, the servos, the flight control, etc. because you want to make sure that your ESC has a BEC that drops the voltage down into a safe range to operate those components. And there's also other types of BECs. For example, you may see a universal battery eliminator circuit, a UBEC, or a switching battery eliminator circuit, an SBEC. And there's also opto ESCs, and they don't have a BEC. So the receiver, the servos, the flight controller, etc., must be powered from a different source. So that means you're going to have to purchase an extra component. You're going to have to purchase a separate BEC to drop the voltage down. So to keep it simple, I would just purchase an ESC that has a BEC. And now we're the last thing we're going to look at is the receiver lead. So this is the lead that gets connected to the receiver, which is used to control the speed of the motors. And this lead is also used to power the drone's receivers, the servos, the flight controller, etc. as long as the ESC has a BEC, which drops the voltage down into the appropriate range, like we talked about. And these are also some websites that sell ESCs. You have Hobby King, you have Robot Shop, you have RC Electric Parts, Drone.Parts, and Get FPV. And I'll be leaving these links in the description as well as the uh, slides that I presented. And I hope this video was helpful. And if it was, be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And in the next video, I will show you an actual physical ESC. So. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.